Welcome to another episode of Small Bike Stuff. This thing here is a classic Suzuki with big 18 inch wheels that's been turned into a small adventure bike. Alright, so this bike here is awesome. It's built by a good friend of mine, Thomas. You all know Thomas, you've seen him in my other videos. Uh, it's got 18 inch wheels front and rear. It's repowered by a Chinese four stroke 125cc engine. Uh, it's got about 10 litres tank capacity, which is awesome, so you can go quite a long distance. Chinese copy of a Makuni carburetor on there. Uh, the air intake is inside the frame. The exhaust is a high exhaust as well, which comes back here with a little tip that makes it direct away from the rear shock. It's got Vans waffle grips, which I think are pretty cool. Uh, it hasn't actually been cleaned since the last time it was used, which was on this trip right here. <laughs> <laughs> so we've all got busy lives, I have a bit more time to work on bikes than other people so I've said to Thomas give me this bike and let's get this thing up and running. Okay, first port of call for me is before we even attempt to fix this thing, let's just see if it goes first. Now if watching my channel hasn't taught you anything about filling up oil on a life fan, then you haven't been watching enough of my videos. Uh, basically just don't put the whole liter in, put maybe 700 mils in, start the thing, get it going, turn it off after 30 seconds, see what the oil level's at and uh, do not measure your oil level when you screw this in, just just place it there and then pull it out and that's your accurate oil level. Okay, let's fill this thing up. Alright, and that's about perfect oil level there, but we'll run it up and see how it goes. Nothing after the first few kicks, so I will check spark, check fuel, make sure we've got everything there and try again. It's been running alright. See if it's got spark. So, the way I test spark is the way most people test spark. Well, a lot of people test spark. You gotta kick it, basically. Yeah, definitely got spark. I think we'll drain the carburetor first. Alright, so my drain screws on this side here. And here's me hose down there, you can see. So, I'm kinda gonna do this slightly off camera, sorry, but. Yeah, it's not exactly new. So, I've just drained some fuel into this little container here and. It's uh, not that nice, but so we've got fuel, we've got spark. Will it start? So it runs, but it only with throttle. Carb's coming off. It won't idle. Alright, next step. There we go. And then you just unscrew the slide. And you're pretty much good to go. These things are really basic to clean. So first things first, you just want to take the float bowl off. It's held on by four screws. And we'll just leave them off to the side. Sweet. One more. The annoying thing about these um, fake Makuni carbs is that they have their mixture screw on the bottom here. And you've got your idle adjustment here. But yeah, this is nearly impossible to access when on a few different bikes. It looks okay, not super green or anything like that. These flow ball gaskets can be heavily annoying. Anyway, here's the carburetor. So you've got your main jet and your pilot jet here. While we're here, we'll just undo everything else and just give it a bit of a clean. I mean, it'll be a waste of time not to. And you see this is like caked and dirt. Dirt. So the jets and the float and the mixture screw and everything are all back in, uh, as well as the needle float valve, of course. We'll just leave that there for a second. The one issue that you face with these cheap Chinese carburetors quite often is that the gaskets swell. That's why you try to drain your carburetor first, and see that one fits super nice. Try to drain your carburetor first to avoid this, but and sometimes you can't, so always have these on hand. Cool, let's put this thing back on. At this point, I can always pay to check uh, the movement of your throttle. Only real tip I can give here is when fixing one of these carburetors with the two bolts is do them up evenly either side otherwise you risk cracking your heatsink ask me how i know here i am checking spark and i just realized i didn't put the rubber boot back on the carburetor which means it's probably getting way too much air whereas this goes up into a filter inside the frame which will probably help so i'm going to reattach that test spark anyway 
See if we can get this thing running. It goes, but it needs quite a bit of work. <laughs> the speedos decided to start working, which is nice, because it wasn't. I'm also running on almost no fuel. All right, let's go get some fuel. Well, I've got fuel. <laughs> and I've also got <laughs> a farm. G'day, mate. If the uh, next gully over has got a pretty good um, hill climb strength. Sweet. Have you got, I'll go and get the little two stroke, eh? And yeah, I'll come back and I'll, I think I forgot my gloves and I'll come grab them and okay. yeah. Alrighty, I love it when a plane comes together. I just want to see how this thing has fared after sitting for a year. Does it run okay? I mean, I've managed to get it idling now, which is cool. So that's good. But there's a few things we need to sort. We'll kill switch it. As you'll see, it's purely off-road, this thing. There's no ignition, it's just the kill switch. And, uh, yeah, so if you see this thing out in public, go give it a kick and have a test ride. Now, you may recognise this farm from the uh, XRM125 video, except that day it was raining, and today it's not. Oh, there's ruts everywhere, and it's quite muddy. And these tyres... Oh... <laughs> These tyres are quite full up with dirt already. Let's see how this thing handles. Follow the track. See how far you can go. Around? So apparently I won't get through this bit here. So while this thing doesn't have great top speed, it does do pretty well at uh, going up hills in first gear. And that's my fabled spot where it fell off on the XRM. Close. <laughs> Take my phone. I'm going to try go up the bit where I fell off last time. Hey, it's some cows. Hello. I better tell them about the bike. So this bike is a Suzuki A50, but it's got a Chinese four-stroke engine swap in there, and it's a bit different. How's it going? Nice to meet you. No! <laughs> this is going to fall over. I am going to fall over. <sighs> I didn't fall over! Alright, how does it handle downhill? I'm just hanging on my rear brake. Oh. <laughs> there we go and that's why I took my phone out of my pocket so Andrew's on the bike now and he's having a bit of a nightmare
here down below. It already only does 80k an hour on the open road. Yeah. So if anyone's asking how fast can a life van go? This. This is a perfect example. You get one or the other. Yeah. You either get really nice open road speed on the flat with backwind only. Yeah. Otherwise it's uh You're looking for like another first. Yeah. Where's first? Oh it's neutral. So life ends do have their limitations. But that's alright, you can't really slip the clutch that well on a semi-auto as well. So what we've discovered is that it goes and it goes pretty well but going up hills the uh, gearing leaves a lot to be desired and also the probably the main issue is that uh, it keeps bogging out it's got a really long intake and if we can sort that out we can probably make it rev a bit freer and the exhaust is quite limiting as well so we're gonna take that apart and see what's happening there but for now I mean it's good enough about it for this episode really it's been a pretty good time riding this Suzuki A50 <laughs> ah. <laughs> that was hard it's been a really good time riding this Suzuki and pinch bike small bikes for life one-handed through the mud <laughs> ah, Semi-automatic for the win, I can film more. You'll see more of this bike later in the year. It's not much to make a small bike work. Just a little bit of effort and a little bit of time. See you next time on Small Bike Stuff.